teenage kids crash cars through commas, living weekly like serial dramas. School moves discreetly, kids seem to be sweet, but they wake up for weekends, then fall back to sleep. <laughs> Valedictorians shit face just to deal with the stress of studying hours for every single test, but hell, hard work pays off in retrospect if an Ivy League school is what your effort gets. But something tugs at you even when resting, because being that perfect just isn't healthy. Your name is right there at the top of the page, but it doesn't seem to matter next to that test grade. You thought you were complete with your good study habits, but no class rank ever equaled a passion. So you delve into poetry just so you can fathom how great minds of generations can fall into madness. You blame your writing on everything, but can't find it for the pace with which your teenage years make everybody change. So you try to go back to what you thought you knew best, but can't bubble completion in the blanks of a test. Your teacher smells like busy work, school is no longer working, because you've seen go in poor light where poetry is lurking. Only with a mic, my friend, only bright to darken, only use of knife, no pen, is to pencil sharpen, only slow to quick again, only loud to deafen, only down go up again, inferno before heaven. Only with a mic, my friend, only bright to darken, only use of knife, no pen, is to pencil sharpen, only slow to quick again, only loud to deafen, only down, go up again, we'll write our way to heaven. <laughs> the world walks at my pace, because I'm holding hands with fate. And wherever we're headed, whatever's intended, I know I won't be late. The world opens at my pace, because I'm standing at the gate that swings in the wind because I oiled the hinge with etchings of her face. <laughs> so here's a little poem that I actually wrote in Nancy to Erinese's writing class. I think she's doing workshops all summer. I know. <laughs> Someday, I'm going to be homeless. I'll spend my time in the libraries, getting lost inside the pages. At night, I'll close the covers. The librarian will mistake me for a book. She'll file me away on the shelf, ensuring that I live forever. Someday, a young couple will take me out to read aloud on a summer's day. They will wander off, leaving me to soak as the sun turns into rain. They'll return me to the library, where the librarian will cut and cut and a scholarly man shall remove me from the shelf, not knowing that there is no copy to replace me with. <laughs> I hold the world in my hands and squeeze it when I feel stressed. This was recommended by my mom's therapist. She says that anger is a valuable energy. Sometimes I'd rather move on than have my mom depend on me. It's like if I crash, she burns. But if she makes ashes, I am the urn. It's life molasses that runs with the wolves or tango classes where nobody turns. It's life lessons that are leaving unlearned. If she makes ashes, I am the urn. How does someone you love turn to your greatest source of miseries if happiness settled down? and took with its simplicity so you're walking through town and suddenly you're no one to see because you've already met yourself and you can't just drink coffee. Now simply me is caught up, is lost in sounds of symphony, tried to live with no ego, so instead it took control of me. I had a blank slate that could reflect memories. It was smashed in tombstones and reborn in embering. Smoke signals to land the night sky on a runway that itself wants to fly form words into memories, then double back again. Sometimes parents raise their kids and then themselves descend. But with this spinning globe that I hold between my hands, I see the top becomes the bottom, but the bottom goes up again. If you live through your mistakes, your mistakes become your friends. Everything is well, if well is how it ends.
Um, just the other night, on Friday, I was at this fire at a place, uh, at a beach, you know, like a bonfire in the middle of this huge crater pit, and, you know, it was circling around and talking to all these people meandering through it. And two different people who I hadn't seen, one in a year, another in a few years, they told me, like, why do you talk so differently? Like, what, what's with your lingo? You know, what do you think? And I was like, man, have I been doing too much poetry, too much verse? You know, like, how do you talk correctly? And I thought, like, like, why do I talk differently? I mean, when I was a young kid, I couldn't pronounce R's or S's. It was all about something like this with the O-flux and everything moving around. But I guess as you're older, you get these dental appliances. And some people think that even your mouth is compliant to the way that they want you to move you about. And if your teeth are chomping, then there's something wrong about the way you seem to talk and the way you move your tongue. Well, there are many languages you can speak through. Sometimes it's deceitful. And I've seen many things trick my mind into the back roads and sideways places that I seem to be moving. Now, there are many abrasions I hold on my skin. When I was running too fast, I fell, tumbled into a different briar patch. Those scratches can last, and sometimes the scars will make your whole body reach back into the past and reflect the memories in physical vibrations, and sometimes these cent centipedes crawling up your skin will feel like your own spine doesn't have the medicine to replace the times that you've been broken, and if you break, I know that there's a place where we can put ourselves back together again. Sometimes it takes time, but that's what growing bends your own back into when you snap straight. And I guess that's a lot, as the night is getting later. <laughs> Thank you. 